Um, so right now, I, I mean, I was trying to drive, but I'm really upset today. And so I just decided to pull over and make a quick video to maybe reach out to some other people who can relate um, to this particular situation. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I cried my eyes out. I was really upset. I, I, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of upset. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, it's again, it's with, like the way the Mandela effect seems to work. It's like if it was just one little thing, then I could deal with it. But it's like one thing after another. Um, one of the things we don't talk about very much is uh, the personal issues that involve the Mandela effect. Uh, where things in your own life or with people that you know or members of your family might remember things differently than, than you do or um, people that you know really well might not uh, remember your relationship the same way that you do or um, uh, just little details of experiences that you might have had in your personal life where you know maybe there's just like one or two other people that could confirm it the way you remember it so you can't really if they don't agree, then what can you do? You can't like go ask the rest of the world about those sorts of things the way you can about the line in a movie. So, anyway, today I had another issue like that, where, you know, in this past year, I've been disappointed several times and really feeling heartbroken because of people that I cared about very much that I thought cared very much about me too, and finding out that Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> it's like this person not behaving the way that I would expect them to. And the, I mean, I've known them and I expect them to behave a certain way. And then, like, what? <laughs> I don't know. There's other other people, too, in the past year. It's like I, I, I trust them or I count on them or or I just, you know, have in, in, incorrect expectations, I guess. So, um, yeah. They ha understanding the Mandela effect it kind of becomes so isolating. That's, that's why I started this YouTube page is because I wanted to uh, feel less isolated <laughs> uh, by reaching out to other people that are experiencing similar types of issues. So this is, a, this is just a bad day for me. And uh, I'm really grateful that there's people out there that can understand a little bit similar to what I'm going through. Have you had this experience too? Um, have you found it recently, um, or have you have you found since you discovered the Mandela effect, or maybe um, as part of the process of waking up, did you realize that people in your life don't seem the same as they used to? Um, so. Uh, if you're going through some rough times or if you're finding difficulty in your personal relationships because of um, the Mandela effect or other things that you're researching that might be in involved with this or just if you're going through a rough time for any reason, hit me up, man. Send me a message. Make, put something in the comments. I, I, I'll, I'll get back with you. Normally when we talk about the Mandela effect, we are comparing shared experiences like things that we know in the media and movies or, you know, um, um, celebrities, popular culture, those types of things that have changed. And um, those are the sorts of things that we can share with each other to confirm whether or not other people also have that shared experience. Oh, geez. It's crazy. I'm really tired. I didn't sleep well. I just got really wasted last night. You have to question everything. Question everything. Question all your beliefs. Say, how, did, how does that, where does that come from, you know? Another question comes up, why? Why would somebody do that? Why would somebody take the braces off of a character in a James Bond movie? What purpose could that possibly serve? Who knows? That changed a whole line of, uh, what do you call that? A whole timeline was changed by that decision somehow. Now, the... The other reason why, the, or many other reasons, amongst thousands, like I said, possibilities and speculation, you could speculate all you want, you know, but do you really know? Um, that the girl was, uh, you know, they just went back and changed that just so we could be having this conversation now. You know, perhaps this is part of the disclosure, you know, because we're hearing and seeing now that uh, 
you know, the, the information has to get disclosed and it has to be digested by this species we call humans if we're going to survive because you can't continue in uh, living a lie and, and thriving in this universe. It has to, you have to have truth. And, um, you know, why would somebody go and take the braces off of this girl's teeth? Okay, here's an, here's an idea that just popped into my head as what could be one out of thousands of possible reasons why. <clears throat> Perhaps... A young girl at that time who had braces and saw that movie was emotionally emotionally affected in some positive way that it gave her, empowered her to decide to do something that changed history in a way that they didn't want it to be changed. Perhaps that. Right? The deeper that you go down the rabbit hole, the deeper it gets, right? Doesn't it? Okay. Now that I've seen that this, the braces were removed off a character in a James Bond movie from 1979, and we see the evidence that this was done, whether it was time travel or astral travel or whatever, somebody went back into the past and took the braces off of a character in a James Bond movie. What do you call it? Andrew Bishago was talking about that going in the past and stuff and changing things, all right? You know, and it's all different things. You know, that's really kind of sort of what, what the reality is that's been hidden from us. And nobody knows what this is exactly. Everybody has their own opinion, and that's about it. Um, there's no complete facts on the quantum effect, Mandela effect, whatever you want to call it. Something affected us in a... In a, in a drastic way um, something uh, just didn't seem right and today our lives are, are a little bit different um, if you're like me it really affected me and my life's a lot different um, a lot of things have changed since the effect and you can trust your memories because you know something's changed you know it's changed it's, in, it's you know it's in your heart pretty much so um, that's that you don't feel like you fit in as much um, anymore. Um, you kind of feel a little bit alone because you're seeing this thing and nobody else is around you. And that's a little bit, you know, disheartening in a way, you know, people are not going to see what you're going to see, uh, all the time. And even with the, the affected community, uh, we aren't, you know, it's, it's unique. It's a unique situation. It's about as unique as a fingerprint because everybody's memories are completely different. Um, we might have uh, similar um, effects, and then that's what you know triggered this whole phenomenon because a lot of people do have similar effects. But you're also going to have uh, personal effects that you deal with on a daily basis. That there's you know there's a bunch of videos out there of guys that are um, seeing things in their daily life that have changed. When you're talking to uh, people that aren't affected by this um, uh, about the effects. Um, you know, I try to keep it as lighthearted as possible. Uh, I don't force my beliefs on anybody, no matter what, um, spiritually or otherwise. And, uh, you know, I basically, whenever it gets brought up, I, you know, I form it in a question like, uh, what do you remember? Do you remember something being different like this or, you know, and I keep it light, you know, I don't, I don't really force that on, on other people. Um, it's up to them. They're going to have to find out just the way, just like you did and just like I did. Uh, we all came to this community because we woke up. Yeah, uh, just, uh, you know, live one day at a time and uh, do the best you can because um, there's still no answers to this Mandela effect. Um, there's, uh, there's only opinions. There's only speculation. And uh, the Mandela effect is, uh, is real. I would just say that I'd always speculated what was going on here, thought things were kind of strange, um, and never really trusted it. Like, I've seen really corrupt shit happen where I came from. It just blew my mind and it changed my life. And I don't, I don't know if I really believe in that we should really cut into our, per, our current fabric that we live in, so to speak, um, go into other dimensions and harvest resources and bring them back into our reality. I just don't know if that's the best idea. I'm not sure if you're going to bring back some sort of a breadcrumb of wickedry, evilness, darkness, 
something that we cannot handle, something we cannot keep control of as humans in our basic human reality that was kind of built for us um, and the other things that are in nature that live here in our three-dimensional three world. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on with CERN and stuff like that or with the quantum computers, uh, the D-Wave computers. Um, that's something that, that definitely caught my eye because actually the uh, inventor of these computers claimed to be able to go into other dimensions. Okay, that's leaving our reality. They go into other dimensions. They find resources and bring them back for use here in our reality. What when I heard the the, uh, the inventor make this claim, it just really got my attention because that's a very bold claim to be able to say that hey, you know, we're going into another dimension. That's like the stuff you saw in cartoons as a kid. You know, I'm going into another dimension. I'm getting all these resources. And I'm going to bring it back and make this world a different place. And it was usually. It was usually an evil character that was doing that. Uh, so I don't know if I'm just kind of brainwashed. I understood that, that possibly the world has been constructed around me um, and that I see on a daily day day to day basis in regards to people um, may not be exactly what I thought it was or was raised to think it was. So I've always uh, just kind of been skeptical of our reality. A lot of the focus of the powers that be is on controlling how we view reality. But one of the things that I didn't really delve into as far is that I believe that the nature of our reality around us is more akin to a dream than we believe it is. And the way that can help us out by viewing it that way and understanding that that's what it is, is when we have a dream at night, and if we dream of a pink elephant with wings flying around, when we wake up during the day, we don't go, oh my God, how did that pink elephant get there with the wings? Uh, you know, what, what, what conspiracy is behind that pink elephant? We just accept the fact that our consciousness created it for whatever reason. It was a symbol that was drawn out from our own consciousness. But what's happening in the, the waking world is the same. I think that the difference being that our waking reality is more of a collective consciousness type dream. Um, if you've ever done any kind of dream work, there's ways of dreaming with other people where you're actually entering other people's dreams. And I think that the waking consciousness is not as waking as we believe it is to be, which is, makes it really funny when people say that they're woke. Because I think that the nature of reality itself is just like the dream. And that we're able to generate these things from our consciousness uh, and if you look at it that way it's not so crazy to see how things like Mandela effects can happen and changing of reality and how um, you know it's it's you know it seems to be that it's impossible for for any you know men or humans to uh, change the reality that has to be something you know crazy far beyond if we start to understand the mechanisms by which reality is created then it doesn't become so implausible to think that all of us could be helping to generate these changes and the strange anomalies that are around us. The, um, the way that we can start to learn how to manipulate our own reality and to break out of this is by working with our own personal dream state. If you've ever done it, again, if you've ever done any work with dreams, um, you've possibly experienced a lucid dream where you understand that you're dreaming and once you do that you're able to make changes in the dream you're able to consciously control the outcome of the dream the trick now is to be able to do that in the waking state and one of the problems that we have is that we have to overcome the inertia of all the other people that are putting out that uh, putting out the ideas and putting out their subconscious into the reality field around us but once we're able to do that we are able to see that the nature of reality is more dreamlike all of the ancient traditions talked about reality being being Maya or being illusion or being not real and what they're actually saying is that it's it's basically like the dream state so once we understand this we could actually start to work to clear our own view of reality and then possibly make a difference in the reality field around us um, that's really what I wanted to do, was reach out to people um, 
that are dealing with a lot of these emotions of first discovery and the Mandela effect and all of the changes that it causes in our hearts and in our minds.